This hurricane season is forecasted to be well above average and maybe even become close to a hyperactive hurricane season thanks to multiple things like La Nina and sea surface temperatures. Let's go ahead and dive on into this video. Here's our current sea surface temperatures and you can see we are already at 30, 28, and 27 in some locations in Celsius. This is already quite far above average for this time of year which will help to contribute towards our more active to possibly hyperactive hurricane season. You can also see here where our La Nina is eventually going to be in place which is even clearer shown there in the dark blue where we have below average sea surface temperature anomalies. In order for us to be into a neutral phase, we're going to have to be between the plus 5 and minus 5 for about 3 months. Now, for us to be in a La Nina, we're going to have to be below that 0.5 mark for about 3 months as well. So, whilst it seems like we're in a neutral phase, we are most likely still in an El Nino going towards a neutral and should be in a La Nina by the time we really get towards peak hurricane season, which once again will help to contribute to a possibly hyperactive hurricane season. Here's our daily sea surface temperatures for the whole world, and you can see that we we are actually well above average at that black line so compared to last year at the orange line we are again above average as well as all the other years dating back to 1981 we are well above average for daily sea surface temperatures which once again will contribute to a very active and possibly hyperactive hurricane season every hurricane season we see a strong high pressure form we're forecasting this one to be uh, quite strong which should lead to more of a track for storms to go into the Caribbean and another track of course to set up where these storms are probably going to go in between the U.S. and that high pressure and then another area where storms are most likely going to track right along that high pressure region. Now I do believe the most storms that we will see are going to be actually in the Caribbean going towards the United States so this will most likely once again contribute to an above average hurricane season. Now, last hurricane season we saw in El Nino, this contributed to a lot more wind shear in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. That is why we only saw one major hurricane make landfall in the U.S. due to that wind shear tearing apart the stronger systems. Now, this year is going to be a complete opposite. We'll have a La Nina in place, which is going to result in less wind shear. Thus, we should have a more opportunity for stronger major hurricanes to make landfall in the U.S. this upcoming hurricane season. Before I continue on with the rest of today's video, make sure you guys have hit that like button and share this video with your family, friends, and on social media. And subscribe to the channel if you are new as this video is taking a lot of effort to make. Let's go ahead and continue with the rest of today's video. Now on to our climatology models and you can see here, this is the sea surface temperatures for the prime of hurricane season in September. And you could see above anomalies out there in the Caribbean, as well as a bit in the Gulf of Mexico. This doesn't mean the Gulf is going to be cold by any means. It just means that it won't be ridiculously above average like the Caribbean will probably probably be near the same as the Gulf of Mexico. So both will be extremely favorable for a rapid intensification. That also means to watch out for the potential of rapid intensification with hurricanes that approach the Caribbean as well, not only just the Gulf of Mexico. If you watched my tornado season forecast, you would have seen this coming from a mile away. Here's the can sips for above average anomalies for precipitation out there in the main development region through the Caribbean into the Gulf. This is most likely going to point towards a extremely active hurricane season. This is for the month of September, the prime of hurricane season and don't forget those above average temperatures which again will most likely lead to rapid intensification of hurricanes so this is looking like a hyper active hurricane season well wouldn't you look at that this has literally just been added the CPC just added a about 20% chance for tropical cyclone formation in the eastern Pacific from May 15th to May 21st and let's not forget the Atlantic as well now they haven't highlighted anything in the Atlantic but you can already see an area above average precipitation being highlighted highlighted from May 8th to May 14th. That is most likely not going to do anything as it's below the main development region. So we will start monitoring for the potential of hurricane development in the Eastern Pacific on May 15th through the 21st, as well as I believe after that time frame on the 21st, tropical cyclone development possibly being a possibility out there in the main development region of the Atlantic. Before we dive on into this year's hurricane forecast, let's look at the last hurricane forecast. I called for 19 named storms, nine hurricanes, and four major hurricanes. We saw 20 named storms, seven hurricanes, and three majors. So I was a bit under on the named storms and a bit over on the hurricanes and very close to the major hurricanes. On average, we see 14 average named storms, seven hurricanes, and three major hurricanes. So I think last year we did pretty good for the hurricane forecast. So here we go, the moment everyone's been waiting for. Here's my forecast. We've got 26 named storms, 14 hurricanes, and seven of those 14 hurricanes becoming major that is double the major amount double the hurricane amount and almost double the named storms amount of what we see each year on average 
Now, CSU is also forecasting 23 named storms, 11 hurricanes, and five major hurricanes. CSU is a bit on the underside of things, and I'm a bit on the higher side of things. It would have been a smarter idea to call in the middle, but with everything that I have seen, and I've seen so much on this hurricane season, the fact that we're already above average on temperatures, the fact that CANSIPs are already pointing for so much above average anomalies for precip and temperatures, and not only that, CSU is calling for uh, their low end amount right there. That's the low end amount for the CSU, a 23 named storm. So that is why I've decided to go extremely high end for my forecast. Again, 26 named storms, 14 hurricanes, seven of those majors. I do think this season is going to compete with hurricane seasons like 2005 and 2020. So I do believe this will be extremely above average and hyperactive. So please have that hurricane preparedness plan ready to go. And I would not be surprised if we managed to squeeze out a tropical storm even before the start of hurricane season on June 1st. I do want to just briefly talk about the possible historic heat wave that could be impacting the U.S. as well as the severe weather potential. But for those of you who are just here for the hurricane forecast, I really appreciate it and I really hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like on the video, subscribe if you are new, and share this with as many people as you know. Again, I really appreciate the support on the channel recently and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's go ahead and dive right on into this possible historic heat wave and severe potential. So here's the CPC's outlook. You can already see a slight risk and moderate risk for excessive heat out there. For May 10th. Now that is quite rare for spring, so this is most likely going to be borderline historic, where we are going to see potentially widespread at 90 degrees Fahrenheit in a good portion of the southern and southeastern U.S. And this will most likely spread into the eastern portion of the U.S., but it shouldn't be as significant nor even as close to historic. Here's the day five risk from the SPC for Monday, May 6th. Now you see that large 15% chance for severe weather potential every 25 miles of a given point. However, the SPC is expecting to issue a enhanced risk for severe weather sometime in the future, whether that be on the day four or the day three outlook. This is going to be for the potential of tornadoes, damaging winds, and extremely large hail. Now, this will continue on into portions of the eastern side of this risk and into the Midwest for Tuesday and Wednesday. However, the SBC has not introduced any outlined areas for severe weather for that just yet. Its predictability is too low on exactly where that severe threat may set up. Thank you guys so much for watching until the very end of the video. If you guys did make it to the end, I want to see how many hurricanes you think will occur this season. Please try to keep it anywhere between 5 to 15 hurricanes, as that is about the more realistic number for hurricanes this year. And uh, yeah, definitely go on more of the higher side, just a little bit of a heads up there, because I mean, everything we looked in this video definitely pointing towards a very active to hyperactive hurricane season. And I will see you guys in another video. I will not be live today on May 3rd. Uh, I will probably be live Saturday night, which should be tomorrow night by the time you guys are watching this. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you guys in the next one. Stay safe, watch severe weather. Goodbye.